For 80 years, Mount Vesuvius has been silent. A silent scientist now fear. Historically, that same quiet ended with Pompeii erased in hours. Today, millions of people live in its shadow, as sensors pick up troubling signals beneath the surface. The calm is breaking, and what happens next could change Europe forever. But why does this dormant period mean greater danger, not safety? In the year 79 AD, the people of Pompeii and Herculaneum went about their daily lives, as Mount Vesuvius loomed above, a familiar part of the horizon. When the volcano erupted, it did not unleash rivers of lava as many imagine. Instead, the real killer arrived in the form of pyroclastic surges, blasts of superheated gas and ash moving faster than any person could run, hotter than a cremation furnace. Modern forensic studies reveal that temperatures reached at least 300 degrees Celsius, with some areas experiencing even more intense heat. The surge swept through Pompeii and Herculaneum at over 100 miles per hour, killing thousands in moments. Victims died not by suffocation, but from instant heat shock. Bones fractured, skulls exploded, and bodies were frozen in their final moments preserved beneath five meters of ash. Pliny the Younger, who watched from across the bay, described a towering column of ash, darkness at noon, and buildings shaking as if torn from their foundations. He wrote of panic and confusion as the sky turned black and pumice rained down. Recent excavations confirm his account, with people caught mid-step, meals left uneaten and families huddled together with no time to escape. The city vanished in less than a day, buried under five meters of ash and debris. What destroyed Pompeii was not a slow-moving lava flow, but a sudden, unstoppable hurricane of fire and ash. Today, the ruins stand as a warning. Vesuvius does not give second chances, and its silence is anything but safe. In the centuries after Pompeii vanished, Vesuvius cycled through eruptions and quiet spells, but none lasted as long as the silence that came before 1631. For nearly 500 years, the volcano seemed to sleep. Villages grew on its slopes, fields flourished, and generations passed without memory of disaster. Yet beneath the surface, magma and gas accumulated, trapped by thickening rock. Pressure built in secret, day after day, year after year. On December 14, 1631, that silence was shattered. The first tremors rattled towns at dawn, but warnings were ignored because earthquakes were common and the mountain had been peaceful for lifetimes. Within hours, a lahar, a river of ash and mud, poured down the flanks and swallowed homes. The next morning, a surge of superheated gas and ash erupted racing downhill at over 100 kilometers per hour. Torre del Greco and other villages were erased in minutes. Eyewitnesses described a black cloud that blotted out the sun and suffocated everything in its path. By the time the eruption subsided, between 4,000 and 6,000 people were dead, and the coastline itself had changed shape. The lesson was clear even then. The longer Vesuvius stays quiet, the more violently it returns. Modern volcanology confirms this pattern because dormancy allows gas and magma to accumulate and increases the risk of explosive eruptions. Today, the 80-year silence is the longest since that deadly event. What may seem like peace is in fact a warning. Pressure does not disappear. It waits hidden until the mountain speaks again. In March 1944, as World War II raged across Europe, Mount Vesuvius erupted for the last time. The volcano, quiet since 1906, sent fountains of lava hundreds of meters into the air. Ash rained down on the villages of San Sebastiano al Vesuvio and Massa di Soma, burying homes and forcing thousands to flee in the chaos of war. The eruption destroyed entire neighborhoods, leaving streets unrecognizable beneath blackened debris. Allied airmen stationed at the nearby Pompeii airfield watched as the, as the sky darkened, 
volcanic bombs and ash buried dozens of B-25 bombers, melting aluminum and shattering glass. Radio logs from the time captured the confusion, engines sputtered, runways vanished, and soldiers scrambled to protect equipment from relentless ashfall. The 1944 eruption reached a volcanic explosivity index of three. It was powerful enough to erase villages and disrupt military operations, but it was only a moderate event compared to the cataclysms of the past. 21 people lost their lives, a fraction of the toll from earlier disasters. The lava flows moved slowly, allowing most residents to escape, and the eruption ended after just over a week. Yet the scars remain, abandoned houses, charred orchards, and wartime photographs showing soldiers standing in fields of ash. Since then, Vesuvius has fallen silent. Decades have passed, and the volcano's slopes have filled with new homes and bustling suburbs. The memory of 1944 serves as the most recent warning, a reminder that even a moderate eruption can upend lives. Scientists now measure every tremor and temperature shift, using the 1944 eruption as a benchmark for what might come next. But history shows that Vesuvius is capable of far greater force than anything witnessed in living memory. Sensors buried on the slopes of Vesuvius record. Every tremor, tilt, and chemical change. In the past year, the volcano's monitoring network has picked up a steady rhythm of micro-earthquakes, tiny fractures deep within the rock, most too small for anyone to feel, but impossible to ignore for scientists watching the data. The numbers fluctuate at month to month, but nothing has crossed the thresholds set by decades of surveillance. GPS stations anchored in the ground show a slow, almost imperceptible downward movement, about one to two centimeters per year. This long-term subsidence matches the pattern seen since the 1950s, a sign that the volcano's upper layers are cooling and settling, not swelling with fresh magma. Tilt meters, sensitive enough to detect the weight of a passing animal, have registered only minor, short-lived anomalies. These blips come and go, often linked to changes in the underground hydrothermal system rather than any surge of molten rock. Fumaroles near the summit vent steam and gas as always, but their temperatures and chemical makeup remain within the normal range. Sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide levels, tracked in monthly bulletins, stay far below the spikes that would warn of magma rising toward the surface. Francesca Bianco, director of the Vesuvius Observatory, addressed concerns after a strong earthquake shook nearby Campi Flegre in March 2025. She explained, For the moment, we are at another step of intensification of the Brady seismic process. Like what happened in August 2023 and May 2024, but for now, no type of process that gives us a sign of imminent eruption. For this to happen, magma must rise to the surface, and this is not happening. Her words echo the consensus among volcanologists. While the region is restless, Vesuvius itself remains in a state of watchful quiet. Every instrument from seismometers and GPS stations to satellite radar and gas sensors feeds a constant stream of data to experts who know that the absence of dramatic signals does not guarantee safety. The volcano's silence is not a promise. It is a puzzle. Pressure can build invisibly for years, even decades, before the first unmistakable warnings appear. For now, the evidence points to a system in balance, with no sign of magma rising or ground swelling. Yet the memory of past eruptions and the sheer number of people living nearby ensure that every anomaly is scrutinized. The question is not whether Vesuvius is being ignored, but whether its quiet can be trusted. As scientists sift through the latest readings, they remain alert to any hint that the volcano's long rest is coming to an end. On the western edge of Naples, a different kind of threat is unfolding beneath the ground. Campi Flegre, a vast caldera stretching under the city and bay, is showing signs of unrest that have scientists on edge. In late December 2024, 
a swarm of 160 earthquakes rattled the area around Pozzuoli in a single day, the most intense burst in decades. The strongest, a magnitude 4.4 quake on March 13, 2025, was felt across the region, sending residents into the streets and prompting temporary school closures. The ground here has risen by more than one meter since 2005, and by over four meters since the 1950s, as Bradyseism, the slow swelling and sinking of the earth, continues at an accelerated pace. This uplift is not just a local curiosity. It is a signal that magma and volcanic gases are moving beneath the surface, building pressure in a system that last erupted in 1538. Dr. Giuseppe De Natale, a leading volcanologist who has spent decades mapping the tangled geology of southern Italy, warns that the unrest at Campi Flegre cannot be viewed in isolation. He explains that while each volcano in the region has its own magma chamber, they are all shaped by the same deep tectonic forces. The African plate slides beneath the Eurasian here, feeding magma into reservoirs that sometimes lie only a few kilometers apart. Pressure changes in one part of the system can, in theory, influence the others, even if no direct underground tunnel connects them. Recent research has mapped out the complex plumbing beneath Campi Flagre. Tomography and magnetotelluric surveys reveal pockets of molten rock and fluids at depths of four to eight kilometers, separated from Vesuvius by solid rock but not entirely isolated. The caldera's Brady season is driven by the injection of superheated fluids and magma into shallow layers, causing the ground to bulge and crack. This process can trigger earthquake swarms, bursts of seismic activity that rattle nerves but do not always lead to eruption. Yet the sheer scale of the uplift and the frequency of recent swarms have put authorities on alert. Dr. De Natale points to the 2024 to 2025 sequence as a reminder that the entire Campanian volcanic province is restless, not just one cone or caldera. He cautions that while Campi Flegre and Vesuvius are independent in their shallow plumbing, the broader system is interconnected through deep tectonic stress and magma supply. A major pressure change in one could, under the right conditions, affect the stability of the other. This is not just a theoretical risk. In the past, periods of heightened activity at Campi Flegre have coincided with changes at Vesuvius and vice versa, though scientists stress that direct cause and effect remains unproven. The 160 quake burst and the meter-high uplift at Campi Flegre are being watched as closely as any tremor at Vesuvius itself. For the millions living above these sleeping giants, the lesson is clear. The threat is regional, not local. What happens beneath Pozzuoli can ripple across the entire Bay of Naples. In this landscape, silence is never simple and pressure can travel in unexpected ways. The next section turns to the people living in the shadow of these volcanoes and what these warnings mean for their future. Naples and its suburbs sprawl across the foothills and plains surrounding Vesuvius, a dense web of life woven over the bones of ancient disasters. More than three million people live within the volcano's official danger zone one of the highest concentrations of population near any active volcano in the world. At the heart of this zone lies the so-called Red Zone, home to 600,000 residents packed into towns like Torre del Greco, Ercolano, and San Giorgio, a Cremino. These communities sit directly atop hazard maps, drawn from centuries of pyroclastic flows, ash falls, and mudslides. Schools, Hospitals and apartment blocks fill the landscape, with highways and train lines threading through neighborhoods built on old eruption deposits. Everyday life unfolds in the shadow of the mountain. Children walk to school past evacuation route signs. Fishermen haul in their nets from harbors that once vanished beneath ash. And families gather in apartments overlooking the sloping flanks. Yet beneath the routine, the risk is never far away. A medium-sized eruption could send a column of ash thousands of meters into the sky, blanketing Naples in a layer thick enough to collapse roofs within hours. 
power lines and water pipes would clog or snap under the weight, cutting off basic services. Ash particles would seep into air conditioning, contaminate reservoirs, and trigger respiratory emergencies in a city already strained by pollution. The threat is not limited to the immediate blast zone. Even a moderate eruption could ground flights across southern Europe as fine ash drifts through jet routes and clogs engines. The economic impact would ripple outward, ports would close, trade would stall, and tourism would grind to a halt. Hospitals would face a crush of injuries and breathing crises, while emergency crews struggled to reach those trapped by debris and traffic. For millions, the difference between safety and catastrophe comes down to a few crucial hours and the hope that warning systems and evacuation plans will work as intended. In the shadow of Vesuvius, daily life carries on atop a fault line between ordinary routine and the possibility of disaster. Official plans call for 600,000 people in the red zone to evacuate within 72 hours of a formal alert. The blueprint looks solid on paper. Warning messages sent to every phone, buses and trains mobilized, highways cleared for outbound traffic. But the reality beneath these promises is far less reassuring. Naples and its neighboring towns are a maze of narrow streets, ancient alleyways, and crowded intersections. Even on a normal day, traffic can grind to a halt for hours. During a real emergency, with panic rising and ash beginning to fall, those roads would clog almost instantly. Dr. Christopher Kilburn, a leading volcanologist who has studied evacuation scenarios for Vesuvius, points to a stark gap between policy and physics. Computer models show that the main arteries out of towns like Torre del Greco and Ercolano would jam within six hours of a mass departure. Bottlenecks at highway on-ramps, stalled vehicles, and frightened families trying to escape all at once would turn orderly plans into chaos. In some simulations, the entire red zone gridlocks before half the population can reach safety. There is no backup route. The sea is not an option for most, and rail lines are quickly overwhelmed by demand. The evacuation plan assumes that warning systems will catch the earliest signs, giving everyone three days to leave. But the technology, despite its sophistication, cannot pinpoint the exact moment when magma will break through. Seismometers, GPS, and satellites can track every tremor and tilt, but they cannot predict the hour or even the day of eruption. The window between the first unmistakable signal and disaster could be measured in hours, not days. If the volcano gives only 18 hours of real warning, as some worst case models suggest, the outcome would be catastrophic. Thousands could be trapped in their cars, caught in the open as ash and pyroclastic flows descend. Officials insist that drills, public awareness, and, layer and layered alerts will buy enough time. Yet, as Dr. Kilburn warns, no simulation has ever tested a full-scale real-world evacuation of Naples. The risk is not just scientific. It is social, political, and deeply human. When the mountain stirs, the difference between survival and tragedy may come down to minutes, not hours. Is the plan a safety net or just a comforting story we tell ourselves? Today, three million people live within Vesuvius's shadow. Scientific advances reveal more warning signs, but certainty remains elusive, and nature's timeline is not ours. As cities expand, the margin for error vanishes. The next eruption is not a question of if, but when, and whether we will be ready. Some silences demand action, not comfort. Share your thoughts below and join the conversation.